We're going to learn about a new method of factoring in this video, but before we do that, we need to go back and remember how to factor by GCF. So this is just a quick review of that, because it's been quite a few videos since we saw that last. So uh, we said factoring by GCF, we, we were going to look at all of the terms of the polynomial, and if they shared a common factor, we were going to remove that. So we said 9 and 6 both contain a 3. And then for the variables, we said if they have a variable in common, which in this case they do both have an x, we were going to take the smallest amount uh, from each of the terms. So in this case, I could only take two of them away from here. I couldn't take three or more like I have in this one. So I'm only going to take those two. That's the most I could take before I run out somewhere. And then the task is going to be how do I turn 3x squared back into 9x cubed? Well, you're going to multiply it by 3 to get the 9, and then I'm going to put that extra third x on the inside. And then to get 6x squared from 3x squared, I'm just going to multiply it by 2. And I would say that this is the GCF factored version of my original expression. So for our new method, which we call factoring by grouping, okay, we are going to have to do that twice. So that's why it's going to be important. So factoring by grouping is used when you want to factor a four-term polynomial. So this is the first time we're seeing a four-term polynomial. And any time you see a four-term polynomial, this is the method you're going to use. This is the only way that you can factor a four-term polynomial. So I'm letting you know right here that whenever you factor using this method, you're always going to factor it into two binomials. Right? So we're still going to get that double parenthesis like we got when we did a trinomial, a three-term expression, and we're going to have two, uh, two binomial expressions in, in those parentheses. Okay? So here's the process that we're going to go through for this. It's called grouping because we are actually going to go through and we're going to group the first two in a parenthesis, and we're going to group the second two in a parenthesis, and then we're just going to do the GCF process on each of those groups. Okay? So if you take a look at this first group, I'm going to look and say they have a 3 in common, right? 3 and 12 both have a 3. And it looks like I can remove two A's, which they do have A in common, so I have to remove A's. I can remove two A's from this group before I run out and can't take anymore. Right? And then in the second group, it looks like the only thing that's in common is 2. Right? This is 4 times 2, and that's 1 times 2. Um, they don't have any A's in common because 8 doesn't have an A attached to it, so it's really just 2. So watch what happens after I do the grouping. Let me slide down a little bit. Okay, so we're going to do the grouping. And then after we group the first two terms and the second two terms, we're going to find that GCF and remove it. So if you notice, the 3a squared got removed, and I rebuilt the expression and said, well, 3a squared times a gives me a 3a cubed. 3a squared times negative 4 will give me negative 12a squared. Did the same thing with the second group. I said 2 times a gives me 2a. 2 times negative 4 gives me negative 8. So I really just did that GCF process twice, once on the first group, once on the second group. Okay, Here's the big part of factoring by grouping. If you notice, the leftover expression after I pulled away the GCF is a minus 4, and I got the exact same expression in the second one. And that has to be true for this to factor. All right. So what we're going to do once we have the GCFs factored out is we're going to regroup. One of the two factors, one of these two parentheses, right? I have these two parentheses at the top that I have to fill in. One of them is going to be that repeating factor. So one of my factors is a minus 4. The other one is going to come from the GCFs. So I'd say 3a squared and 2. That's going to make my other one. So here's my regrouped version, right? So I factored, and then I'm going to regroup. 3a squared plus 2, that makes a factor made up of the two GCFs and a minus 4 is the other one. Here's your second example of factoring by grouping. And I know I'm going to use grouping again because when I'm looking at the expression, I'm seeing four terms. Uh, and we're always going to use the grouping method whenever there are four terms. So again, we said, let's group each of the pairs, right? the first two and the second two. And let's find the GCF for that pair. So I would look at this first group and say, I see a 4 in common. And I see two D's, because again, I run out of D's there, so just the two. Okay. And then I'm going to rebuild this, and it looks like it's going to turn into D plus three. Okay. And in my second group, uh, I don't see anything in common, because there's no number here, right? So they don't have a number in common, and, and three doesn't have a D attached to it. 
So we do have to pull something away, because i got to pair 4d squared up with something in that parenthesis. So what we're going to pull in this case is they, they really only have a GCF of 1, but they do have a negative sign. So I'm going to pull out a minus sign and a 1. And this is actually really important, because if I left it like this, and I didn't pull out the negative 1, then my parentheses wouldn't match. Remember, I'm supposed to have a d plus 3, and I'm also supposed to have a d plus 3 here. And we accomplish that by pulling away the negative sign. So the negative sign uh, is on the outside, and that allows that inside to match. And if I were to distribute this back, negative 1 times d, well, that's negative d. Negative 1 times 3, well, that's negative 3. Okay? So sometimes you're only going to pull away a 1 or a negative 1 if when you look at the terms, they don't really share anything else. All right, so now that I've GCF'd both of the groups, I see my matching d plus 3. I'm going to regroup and say one of the terms is 4d squared minus 1. That came from my GCF and my GCF. Right? And then the other one is the matching d plus 3. And that is the factored form using factoring by grouping.